watercolor session for you so we're going to draw a very simple drawing a hummingbird okay we're going to draw hummingbird because it's spring season right so we, we can see hummingbird in this season so i saw one uh, hummingbird in my backyard yesterday so i just got inspiration from that okay let's do one hummingbird drawing <laughs> okay so i'm going to connect to my camera so you can see it clearly what i'm drawing and you can make any adjustment you can just make any changes in your drawing whatever you want okay you don't need to go exactly like my drawing you can just change it even the proportion the additional details you are doing so let's start i'm going to connect to my camera yeah hope it is clear So I have all these materials ready. So I'm using a watercolor paper, nine by 12 size, normal sketchbook paper size, okay? And I have pencil, eraser, a black Sharpie, and I'm gonna use these two brushes for today's drawing. One medium size brush, brush number eight, and a small brush. So this is actually six, uh, brush number six, but you can take two or four or something, something really small for details. It's better to take a pointy tip brush. And we need a cup of water, paper towel, all that extra materials, okay? So let's start drawing. And I have made a rough sketch for you today. So we're going to make a really small drawing, you know? Uh, the actual size of hummingbird is kind of like a seven centimeter, around seven centimeter. That means like this much, how much it is. This is my ruler, so it's like seven, seven to 30. 13 is the biggest, you know, the tallest, the longest one. But actually, this is bigger than 13 centimeters. So, you know, you can just guess the actual size of hummingbird. Did anybody see hummingbird in real life? In your garden or anywhere? It'll be fun. You know, it's really difficult to spot because they're really fast. And we can't even see, you know, they're sitting somewhere. <laughs> yep. So let's start sketching. I'm going to take my pencil. So we're going to start with the axis of the bird. So that means what is the, the, you know, the angle of that bird. So this is the angle. So we'll draw that angle. So just draw it in the middle, kind of in the middle. You can make it bigger, okay? So this is the axis. And we will divide the space into two, but you know, we need a smaller head with a small oval kind of circle and body is a little bit longer than the head so we will make another oval shape tiny bit longer like double the size of the head very light sketch because we're going to erase some you know some basic things in this one we just uh, we just need the the final drawing so make sure the lines are really light and the tail is kind of a triangle, but I'm just changing the angle of the tail this way. Slightly a different angle, like this. So I'm getting a lot of questions about the material. So you can use any material that you have, okay? I'm using watercolor. You can use acrylic or gouache or any medium that you like. So if you want to know the size of this, this is like maybe three finger space head and four finger space big body. And again, two finger space triangle shaped tail. Around that, you can make it bigger if you want. And let's draw the beak here slightly in a different angle. This way, long beak. Can you see this drawing? I hope you guys can see it clearly. Let me connect it to a bit, tiny bit. Okay. Yeah, so this is the basic uh, shapes we need. We need an oval, two ovals. One is smaller, one is bigger, and a triangle shape and a tiny straight diagonal line for the beak. 
And I'm going to connect these shapes together with curves. So here I'm adding a curve, small curve between these two shapes. Another curve here. Now I'm going to erase this line, the overlapping lines. OK, so this is good. And I will be very close to this beak. So I'm going to draw the eye here with a tiny oval. OK, and add one more line for the beak, but really close to the first line. OK. So you can see that beak is really thin. And normally, we can see uh, hummingbirds around this kind of flowers like this, with long tube-shaped flowers. And we'll, we're going to draw flowers like this, OK? So the beak is really thin, like sharp edge. Yeah, Samanda, you can use gouache. Gouache is really good. And now we have to draw the big wings. See, this is the wings we are drawing. But, you know, look at the axis. So these lines are kind of starting from this axis. The first one, this one is kind of smaller because it's on the other side. So some foreshortening will happen. That means it will become smaller. It will look smaller from this side. Okay. So we'll draw a slanting line, a smaller slanting line here and a longer slanting line on the other side. And you can just connect these lines with another straight line. If you keep your, keep your, keep your pencil or ruler there, you can see there is a connection. There is some, some kind of connection between these shapes. So it is like this, okay? So first, I'm going to draw one line from here, just below that head, or you know, oval head. So we'll draw axis, we'll draw one diagonal line from the axis. Yeah, just draw along a line. Straight line is enough. Another line here. A little bit longer. And another thing uh, you can check when you draw something is the axis of these, oh, not the axis, the angle of these uh, shapes these lines, if you're a little bigger, if you know about the angle, how to measure the angle of triangle shapes, you know, these joints, it's easy. You can kind of see that you can, you can, you know, you can just compare it with the smaller angle. You can compare it with the longer, you know, acute and obtuse angle. So just look everything, observe everything clearly and see, look at the angle what type of angle it is making. It's kind of around 90 degree. So this way you can make a similar drawing. Yeah. And then I'm going to draw another line from the axis, but this time I'm using a curve. Yeah. One curve to the end of this line. Yes, Samanda, it's 90 degree angle. Yeah, it's around 90 degree. I don't know the exact measurement. Yeah, it looks like something around 90 degree. Correct. Now I'm going to draw another curve from this tip to the, the end of this line, okay? See? So what kind of shape it is making? So it's like, like a half oval, actually. Yeah. And if you got uh, all these lines, you can do one thing. Can you raise this top half? Because we cannot see this line because of this the, the back of the body. So we can erase that line. But here we need this line. We need something like this. Yeah. And then you can erase the axis. We just need this much only. So now everything is kind of clear, but we cannot see this line because of this wing, right? So what we have to do next, erase this line too. 
So remember the, uh, you know, the, the techniques that we used. We started with the basic shapes, very minimum basic shapes, bigger shapes. Then we added, you know, overlapping shapes on top. Then we erased all these lines that is not needed. That means this shape is in front. So we cannot see this line here. And this body, this shape is in front. So we cannot see this line at the back. So we erase. Just visualize everything. So this is the shape we need at the end. So we, we finished all this rough sketching. Now we're going to add details, like smaller, small details. So we finished all the bigger shapes. Okay. Now we're going to add the details. So we can see this tiny, tiny feathers there. So beautiful, right? So we have to find the, the overall shape of this feathers. You know, if you go into the details like one by one, it is really difficult to add that. So we won't get that perfect, you know, shape there. So we'll draw this line and this line will help you to draw the feathers like this. And we'll erase this part later. Okay. So let's draw one line from here. Maybe, yeah, maybe from here. I don't know the exact thing. I think it is around here. Yeah. But make sure the lines are lighter. If your line is darker, you can erase it a little bit and make it lighter. Yeah, I'm making it darker so you can see it clearly. First curl. And then one finger space here. Add one more curl. And we'll erase this line later after drawing this tiny feathers, okay? And don't worry, this video will be available he here in our YouTube channel, so you can come and watch anytime. Now I'm going to draw the same type of line on the other one, but it's this time this is kind of smaller. So I'm going to add one line here, another line here. Okay, so actually, if you are going into something like a cute illustration drawing, you can just stop here. This is also good. But if you like, uh, you know, adding details, you can add the details just like me. Okay, yeah, you can just decide whether you need this much or you need more details. Both are okay. Sometimes simple drawings are really, you know, cute and good. So. You can even make the eye like a bigger eye, you know, with eyelashes and all. So you can change the style of your drawing if you like that. And always use sharpened pencil that your, you know, your drawing will be pretty to use your sharpened pencil. So I'm erasing this lines. I'm not completely, I'm just making it lighter, okay? Not completely erasing, softening the lines. So we can add the details. And I will start from this, this middle curve. OK, so I'm adding this kind of lines, one straight line and then something like a long oval shape. And these lines are helping me to put that uh, feather in correct place neatly so if you like to add this detail you can start drawing it make sure each line is good each line is pretty just give some love and care to each line yeah good see that's that's nice right and you can repeat the same thing for the other side of the uh, wings other side of the birds birds wings Tiny thin oval shape, packed very nicely in that curve, that curved shape. So we are not drawing the feathers here. That's going to be like this small, small scale shaped feathers. Maybe you can just mark it.
Okay, so I finished the first set of um, feathers. Now I'm going to draw this, the next set. Same thing. We'll start with the first one. And same width. And the length is actually the, the curve. Pack it nicely. Close to each other. Slowly complete one by one. Oops, that was not looking good. See, look at that. So I'm erasing that last one. So this is the final drawing. So just do it clearly, okay? Neatly. Yeah, that's it is done. Same thing for the other, other side. And that line looks a little bit darker, so I'm erasing that. But still, I can see that mark, okay? The guideline. That was easy. Done. So this looks good. And again, <coughs> sorry. So if you want to go into a tiny bit more details, the next step is for, you know, just a little bit more detail. So I'm erasing that line, the slower portion, like a, this is like a curve, right? So we have to make a straight line like this. That's another detail. So if you like that part, you can keep that like a round shape. But if you like this detail, you can erase that and add the straight line to the way. This one is more, you know, kind of realistic. But I like the illustration style. Sometimes, you know, cute drawings are really, you know, cute and it's beautiful. It's easy, easy to draw sometimes, you know. So just choose the one you like. And I'm going to add one or two feathers here. And this part will be, the tail will be like longer lines. So we finished the, the main drawing and some Hummingbirds have this kind of, uh, you know, uh, something like a magenta or purple color just below the eye. So I'm going to draw that. It's starting from the eye. Something like a curve here, like a piece of, what is it, uh, orange, you know, like a small piece of orange slice. Yeah, so this can be a different color, like a purple or magenta or red. Yeah, depends on each type of you know hummingbird there are 300 something hummingbird varieties so some of them have red some of them have you know purple magenta just check it out and you can choose the color you like so we finished drawing the hummingbird now you can add background details if you want to add some flowers i'm going to draw this triangle like flowers triangle with some petals and few lines coming from that. Yeah, you can draw a bunch of that, bunch of that kind of flowers. Very simple, okay? Don't make anything complicated because our main subject is bird. So these tiny details can support our main subject. Yeah, it's kind of starting from the side of the paper. I'm not adding any leaves or anything, just keeping that simple. So we have completed the drawing and those who like to uh, outline this drawing with Sharpie, you can do it. I'm not outlining, I'm just keeping it like this. But if you like outlining with the Sharpie, use a permanent marker. So check your pen, whether it is permanent ink or normal ink. Don't use normal markers because it can spread into your colors, you know, while you paint especially when you use acrylic or watercolor or gouache. But that's not a problem if you're using color pencils, crayons or oil pastel because there is no water and markers will not blend. So 
So just choose the marker according to your medium. Yes. So I'm going to choose these colors. So I have a, some I have some rough sketches here for our drawing. So I'm going to use green color for the back of the body and some lemon yellow and some purple blue color. So these are my color combination. And for this, uh, you know, the feathers, it's actually kind of grayish color. So I'm going to mix a complementary color to get this gray. Um, I'm choosing verdian green and red for this color. Okay, I'm going to choose red and green to get this color. It's a kind of a neutral grayish color. This color you will get by mixing complementary colors. So red and green are complementary on the color wheel. So you can choose red plus green for that. Ready? Ready for painting? Twinkle, any question that I need to answer before we start painting? None so far. Okay, that's good. <laughs> So let's start painting. Yeah, so there are two methods you can use for painting. You can paint the background. You know, you know, if you have more time, you can just finish the background with some gradients or something like a wet on wet technique and wait. And everything is, if everything is dry, you can start painting the main subject. That's that's actually a professional method, normal method all the uh, watercolor art artists use. But you know, sometimes we have to do really fast for something like a like one hour class, just like this. So then we will start with the main subject. So you will get enough time to paint the background later. Okay, so I'm going to start with the bird. But just remember, there are two methods. You can start from the background or from the main subject. And you can share your work when you finish it in our, um, you know, Facebook community. If you are my parent, I mean, a student. Okay. So the parents have a special uh, FB community there. So you can check it out. And if you are not my student, you can just post it in your social media and tag us with Nimi's art. So I can see that. <laughs> you just go and check your work. Yeah. So I'm taking my bigger brush, brush number eight. Let me show the whole thing. Yeah. So I'm using this Winsor & Newton watercolor pan set. That's a basic set. And I'm going to choose this green color. It's called Viridian Green. Let me show it on this paper, rough paper. So this is the green I'm choosing. That's a cool green, like a bluish green color. Then I will take some lemon yellow. Oops, look at this. So there is some lemon yellow there. So I just mixed the green into lemon yellow. So that's why I'm cleaning it with the paper towel. Yeah, so this lemon yellow. It's very bright and fluorescent. -y. Hello, yeah. Normally, I will not use this for my you know landscape because it looks so bright. I don't want this color to be in a natural landscape. But this is the color, you know, good for hummingbird because it has some shine on the feathers. Nice, you know, glow in the uh, in the feathers. Yep. And then I'll choose some purple. So I have a purple. In a tube set, so I just put it in this uh, palette. So this is the purple. Oh, it's really bright. When I add some water, it will turn into a bright purple color. So you can mix this color by mixing um, ultramarine blue and crimson red. Or you can just mix it with magenta plus ultramarine blue. Yeah, you need a color around it. So this is going to be the the color of her throat here, that shape. Okay, so these are the main colors. And for this neutral color for the feather, I will choose red, crimson red.
crimson red plus verdian green this i just want that to be in the same palette of colors yes these two colors you can see the green and red is turning into a brownish muddy color if you want more brownish color you can add more red if you want something like a greenish brown color you have to add more green so you can just oh, you know change the color according to the proper see look at the color i got it's like a green color i like this green color i mean gray color sorry for that so it's a gray color i got by mixing opposite colors in my color set verdian green and crimson red so these are my color palette for today's work verdian green that's a bluish green lemon yellow and purple yeah, purple or any magenta color you can choose this color this is your choice and this is crimson red plus green verdian green okay so these are the main colors the flower can be any color let's keep it on the side so you can choose it and i'm i'm using a wet on wet technique for bird this these colors are blended together on the body around here okay so take two brushes for that. So one brush for green and one brush for lemon yellow. Two brushes. So I'm going to choose this bigger brush for green color. I'm adding some water and keeping it ready before I apply. And the, with the next brush, I'm going to choose my yellow color. Lemon yellow. Any yellow is fine. These are the colors I'm choosing. See? That's so bright. And take enough quantity of paint into your palette. Add some water. Keep it ready. Because you'll do it very quickly. Just accident, I accidentally mixed it into the green. That's okay. Anyway, it is going to mix it on the paper. Yeah, so my two colors are ready with two different types of brushes. I mean, two different brushes. Okay, and I'll start with verdian green on the toe part of the head. You can paint over the eye, that's okay, because it's going to be black or dark color at the end. And then I'm going to paint here. See, first you can watch and I'll give you time for you to paint, okay? Maybe just watch it. Just paint this part. And in the middle, I'm going to put the yellow color. And they both will blend together. And I'm going to put some drops of green here and there. Let me keep it down a bit more closer. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not touching it will blend together gradually. And I'm going to put some yellow on the head. Yeah. They start, you know, going into each other. And something, yeah, same color on the feather too on the wings too same green color with a little bit more water and some yellow here and there so this technique is called a wet on wet so one of the you know basic method we use in watercolor yeah Will take time to blend okay you see it has more paint and water to latch very slowly it's kind of mixing and i'm going to put a little bit more yellow yeah this looks okay maybe just a tiny bit more red sorry green on the side that's good. 
So I'm going to stop here for this. Uh, these two colors. Wash the brush and take the next colors. Yeah. So I'm waiting for this layer to dry before the next color. Okay. It will take some time. I'm going to wait like a few minutes. So you guys can start painting it now. And just let me know when you finish these steps, okay? So I'll start with the next color. Twinkle, uh, is there any announcement or anything that we can tell now? Because anyway, I have to wait. <laughs> anything we need to tell them before uh, starting the next color? Yeah, we have. So if you uh, love or like our um, online classes, uh, free resources, please vote for us to be the best of 2022. And our activity hero, let me share with you guys. So here, can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah, I can see. Yeah, so you can go to activity hero and you can vote for us. You can see the tab here and the la uh, right bottom of the screen. And then you can vote for us. It's one day left and we... um. We would love to, you know, ask for your help <laughs> to help mm -hmm. us to be in the top three and the chance to win a $100, uh, I'm a, a, I think, gift card. It's a gift yeah. card. Yes. And then um, announcement we have, if you want to have fun and paint for your uh, for summer, you can join or can you can enroll in our summer art camp. It will start on June to August 2022. So you can see all the details here we have for five to seven years and eight to 12 years and our 20% off will be end tomorrow and this is the last day then the next day from May 16 to June 29 will be 10% off. So if you want to join with the 20% off, you can join now. So yeah, that's it. Yes, Twinkle. So for Activity Hero, we are fifth now, right? Yes, we are in top five oh, so <laughs> and cool. looking forward for top three. So yeah. guys, please help us be in top three this year. We are in top three last year, 2021. And mm -hmm. we are we want to be on that top again. <laughs> yes. I will share the link in the comment section. So yeah. That's cool. So let's start the next step again oh okay Focus yeah thank you Sami, for voting <laughs> <laughs> so let's start the next color so you can choose your color you can choose purple or pink or magenta whatever co color you like for this next one that's the third color we are using and this one i'm not um blending or anything i'm going to keep it there with a lighter tone like lighter value Okay, not too dark because I just want to show that bright color there. Add more water. Take your purple. Add more water. And I'm using my smaller brush for this. And I'm going to put this over here. The shape we made. That, you know, half oval like shape there below the eye. It's the color, and I'm going to put the same color for the, you know, uh, tail too. But for the tail, I just want that to be mixed with some green. So I think some green will be good. Some green and purple. And 
and yeah now this part is dry so the wings are dry so i think we can paint the feathers too see feather is kind of a brownish uh, gray color so i'm going to mix a complementary color for getting that grayish brown color see it's it's completely okay if you don't want to mix complementary color you can choose your gray or you can just choose your brown color darker brown that is also fine but I like this color, it's really cool, nice. So I mixed with verdian green and crimson red to get this color. So you can choose your brown or gray or you can mix this complementary color, just like me. A greenish gray color. And remove the extra water on the side of the palette and slowly apply on the feathers. So there are different types of gray grays you can you know mix in watercolor. Basically, like three different types of gray color with three different sets of complementary colors: green, red, yellow, and purple, or orange and blue. So these are complementary colors on the color wheel. You can check your color wheel. You can check. Just Google color wheel and you can see all these three sets of complementary colors. So you have to choose from your color palette for mixing the gray color. This I choose this verdian green, so I want to include that verdian green in the gray color tone. Yeah, we'll, we'll just, uh, you know, do this kind of color coloring more, okay? There are a lot of things to learn in watercolor. Good. I like that cool color. So we finish. Uh, I think we can use the same color for the beak too. Yes, same color for the beak. So whatever color you're using for those wings can be used on the beak. Like a medium light tone, okay? Not really dark can see the transparency of that color. That's a good thing about watercolor. You know, it's really transparent, a translucent feel of painting, not opaque. Yep, so we finished it and we can add more details in the next layer. So we're using, uh, you know, two different types of methods, layering and wet on wet. So let's do some layers. When it dries, especially on this, that, you know, scales, the wet, you know, the small sh shaped, um, scale shaped feathers, okay? Yeah, so that needs more time. So by that time, I think we can paint the flowers. So choose the color you like for the flowers. I'm going to choose the uh, same crimson red. So this color. with some chrome yellow lines. This is my color combination, but you can choose your color for the feather, you know, for the flowers. That is cool. Yes. So I like that flowers. And some yellow lines. Yeah, you can take some bright, not bright, medium tone of yellow color. Something like chrome yellow or gamboge yellow. Yeah, that kind of yellow, okay? few lines that's pretty so if you're outlining this uh, drawing with sharpie you don't need to add the second layer because that's where we're going to add the second layer but you didn't add the sharpie line or any black marker outline you can do it 
It's completely optional. It's already looking beautiful, right? Yeah. For well, this part is dry, so I'm going to take my verdian green. I'm going to add these lines. Just outlining with verdian green with a fine tip brush. So this is layering, but we are doing very minimum layering. Okay, if you want, we can add one line on the side of the wing, like shadows. Same thing, one line on the side of the wings and few C shape scales. One line at the back of her body, like a shadow. Again, I'm going to add few lines here. See, I'm not uh, touching the wet area because if I do the layering, you know, the darker tone on that wet area, it will blend again. So I'm just doing it only on the dry areas of the body. Just few small curved lines, like scales of the fish. And some purple purple lines or blue lines, okay, for the tail, just to add these lines on the body. Okay. And some purple lines on this part of the body. So I'm going to add few lines like this, tiny lines, okay. Instead of adding the curve, I'm adding the tiny lines. Can you see it? Just small, small details. So use the tip of the brush for that. And if this is really difficult, you can just, uh, you know, skip this. Yeah. And some shadows. So then we have to add shadows on the gray feathers. So use the same color, a tiny bit darker value. Same color, okay? Darker value means add more pigment and a little bit less water. It should look a little bit darker than the first layer. That's it. So you can check it on the rough paper, whether it is dark enough. Not really dark. It's too dark. Maybe less pigment. Yes, this color is good. So same color, a little bit darker value. Okay. And I'm going to do it on the sides of the feathers. One side of the feather. One, two. Just like this. One by one. And this shapes will, this layer will give shape for these small feathers. Yeah, this is really, you know, thin line. So if this is difficult, you can skip this step. You can simply outline the whole drawing with Sharpie or marker. That also will look beautiful. And you need a neat, you know, pointy tip brush for this. Otherwise, it will not work. Tools are really important. So if you want to see the brushes I'm using, you can check the description. You will put it there. There are some good quality brushes. Yes, that one. And same thing for the other side. So don't touch on the wet part of the painting. Just one line on one side of the feathers. One by one. See, actually the pencil line is really dark. That's why you can see it. When you do real watercolor painting, when I'm doing real watercolor painting, maybe I'll make it really, really light. So this layer will give shape to this whole feathers. The eye looks empty, you see? So we need to put the same color there. 
but I'm going to go with the darkest tone of this gray color. Okay, more pigment, less water. Again, if you have a Sharpie or marker, you can use that too. And I'm going to leave a tiny gap for the highlight. So beak also need a shadow just below that line. The tip of the brush to get this fine line. So we almost finished it. Yes, kind of good. And you can add more details in the background or you can just paint with plain color, but do it neatly. This is a rough sketch I did it. I mean, a, a rough painting I did before this class. So I have some idea about the colors. I use sap green. So if you want, you can use sap green or you can add more details like lots of flowers or maybe bugs, ladybugs, you know, make it pretty. And learn more about hummingbird. <laughs> Make a humming, hummingbird garden in your home. Be fun. Yes. Um, I'm going to add a few more details. So if you have any questions, you can just put it in the comment. I'll answer you before we leave. And you can do anything in the background. And if you finished it, uh, don't forget to share it with us. I just want to see how it looks at the end. Just want to see your painting. Okay. So then I, I have some idea how I can plan the next uh, artwork. So I'm going to do some yellow color around this. They're touching the feathers. Yep, Santi is done. See you on Ooh. Wednesday. <laughs> Very yes. Good. See you on Wednesday, Sandy. Yes. Oh, I'm that good. shower, yeah. Shower, yeah, you're right. right. Oh. She's in our 8 to 12 years. Yes. Please don't, uh, don't forget to tag us. You can check out on Instagram, newmissart.com. I just shirt, uh, searched the hummingbird here in Philippines, mm -hmm. and they have a shiny feathers. Yeah. So cool. And you know, the, actually, that is not the pigment of the feathers. Actually, the, the material of that feathers making it look like colors. Mm -hmm. Something yeah. particular They're about that. Just beautiful. Their feathers are colorful. Yeah, lots of colors. Yes, and we got a question earlier. When will be the classes for the summer art camp? So for five to seven years, it will be on June 27 to August 2. And then for eight to 12 years, it will be June 29 to August 4. So let's have fun. There will be a new kind of themes, um, surprises, and activities inside of the class. Yeah, lots of activities. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Yeah. We're almost done. It's beautiful. If you're doing this uh, background, you have to take a bigger brush and you have to do it very quickly. So these colors will blend and you can add some, you know, tiny, tiny droplets. You can just 
you know, put colors like this to get nice result. So I'm using some verdian green. I'm just tapping, tapping, tapping. Tap, 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 tap. See? <laughs> like this texture. <laughs> Which is fun. <laughs> yeah, it is fun. It's fun. Just have fun when you're doing, you know, painting. I think that's the key, right, Miss Nimi? Yes. Just have yes. fun. <laughs> that's, that's my key, you know? <laughs> and you will like create something I know, um, fun as well <laughs> and pretty yeah and I really amazed with the, the works the kids had done from last the YouTube uh, session so I thought it was really yeah. difficult but you know they did an amazing work I saw some of the works from their Instagram and all yeah I'm so surprised what we did last Last time, uh, the tulip, the tulip, the tulip field, yeah, yeah field. With, with a girl, yeah, that was really cool. <laughs> I'm amazed with the uh, creative kids or the artistic ones, like even the five years old. Their art is really good. Yeah. Nice. Done and yeah, the the yellow and green are blending. Yes. The Yellow and green are blending, and I'm using some verdian green for this tiny, tiny dots on it. But you should be careful because it should not spread on the bird <laughs> since we finished. Yeah. So who's done? Are everyone done with their artwork? Please share it with us. And, you know, we would love to see your artworks for today's live. So uh, is they can attach their work in the comment section. Is it possible with the YouTube or? Yeah, yeah. I think they, they can mm -hmm. um, okay. post it in the comment. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is also cool. So if you want to post your work in the comment section, you can do it. Let's, I'll double check. Uh, no, we can talk something. Yes, so I finished it. Oh, Still, I think you know. No. No, okay. Yeah, like that. That's, that's difficult. <laughs> so don't but worry. Yes. You can, yeah, you can post in your social media, in parents' social media, and tag me. And yeah, if you spend more time, it will become pretty. You can see this lines, the pencil lines. So I, I feel like I need to add more details. <laughs> so <laughs> you, feel like you can just do it. Anyway, I'm stopping here. I got... Uh, I hope you got some idea about watercolor techniques with this class. So thank you guys for uh, joining today. We'll say bye now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you everyone for joining. Please don't forget to vote us on Activity Hero so we can be on top three again for this year. Yeah. Yes. Bye guys, okay. and we'll come with another YouTube session next month. Next month, do yeah. We have? Next month we have on June six. Let me check the calendar. Yeah. Yes, June, June six. That's Monday, and it's our free summer art camp. So if you want yeah. to join, if you want to experience our summer art camp, please join on June six. We will announce it on all social media channels that we have. Yes. Thanks, Twinkle. Thank, Thank you, you so Sunny. Much. I enjoyed bye -bye. it so much. Bye. bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone.